are going to go ahead and get started with our Great Loop Trivia game. This is being played courtesy of Michael Martin, who is a yacht broker with Curtis Stokes and Associates. So our thanks go out to Michael for providing this game for us. Um, little quick hint for you, a lot of the answers were in the best of the loop presentation. So if you attended last Tuesday night, you might have a little bit of an edge here. The way this is played, you'll see the question. Um, you will have 20 seconds to answer it. And it's 50 points for every correct answer. And the first five people who answer correctly get a 25, uh, 25 point bonus for their quickness in answering the questions. We're gonna give away three prizes to the top three players. Uh, the, the winner will get a three-year AGLCA membership extension. Second place will get a two-year extension and third place will get a one-year extension. So I'm gonna go ahead and we are gonna get started. Question number one, who founded AGLCA? Was it Ron and Eva Staub, Janice and Steve Cromer, Kim Russo or Lewis and Clark? Who founded AGLCA? You've got a couple more seconds to lock in your answer. And the correct answer is Ron and Eva Staub. About close to three quarters of you got that correct. So congratulations to those of you. Nobody thought it was me. Glad to hear that. Um, so we've got the top five who answered most quickly got those 25 bonus points. And the others who got it correct all got 50. We can only display 20 at a time here. We know that more of you got it correct. Next question, how high is the Peterborough lift lock? And if you attended on Tuesday and the best of the loop, Peterborough lift lock was one of the top locks on the loop. It is a tall one, there's a hint. Um, and the, the lock through, the, the locking up takes about two minutes. The correct answer, 65 feet. Nice job that about 70% of you got that correct. 65 feet is the change in elevation at the Peterborough lift lock. And we had a change in our leaderboard for some of our quick people there. So Michael Beck has moved into first place. Congratulations, Michael. Next question, what is the farthest distance between fuel stops on the loop? Is it about 330 miles from the start of the Tentom to Bobby's Fish Camp, about 300 miles along the Atlantic ICW, about 250 miles from Alton, Illinois to Paducah, Kentucky, or about 100 miles on the Hudson River? The farthest distance between fuel stops. Excellent. Almost all of you got that correct. 250 miles from Alton, Illinois to Paducah, Kentucky is the correct answer. And Michael Beck stays at the top spot and we've got a five way tie for second place right now. So that'll be interesting as we continue to move through. Next question, most of you knew Ron and Eva Staub founded AGLCA. When was it that AGLCA was founded? 1904, 1965, 1984, or 1999? Couple more seconds to lock in your answers. Correct answer is 1999. Ooh, that one stunned, uh, stumped a lot of you. That's the smallest percentage correct we've seen so far. It was 1999. And that was shortly after Ron and Eva Staub wrote, Honey, Let's Get a Boat. So a change in the leaderboard again. Uh, Michael and Barbara Lussier as, at the top. Next question, if your beam is 24 feet, you cannot cruise the Great Loop. You cannot cruise the Trent Severin Waterway. You cannot cruise the Erie Canal or you cannot cruise the Champlain Canal with a 24 foot beam. So if you have a catamaran, this question might be important for you to get right. The answer is the Trent Severin. Nice job, everyone. 62.7% got that correct. And our leaderboard. Michael and Barbara remained in first place there. Well done. Our next question. What does the platinum burgee signify? Is it looper in training? Does it mean that that boat has, or the people aboard have completed the loop once, that they've completed the great loop more than once, or that they're a former looper? What does the platinum burgee signify? And the answer there, very well done. 90% of you, uh, it means you have completed the Great Loop more than once. So that Platinum Burgee is a pretty big distinction. 
Um, I think we're at uh, less than 200 that have ever uh, tackled the loop more than once, and we've got a few of the Platinum Loopers speaking with us this week. Moving on to the red burgee, a very unusual burgee. What does the red burgee signify? There's a looper in danger, it's an admiral sponsor, it's a former looper, or it's a lieutenant sponsor. The red burgee. A few more seconds. The answer is that it's an Admiral sponsor and kudos to 75.9% of you for getting that right. And we appreciate all of our Admiral sponsors. That is our top level sponsor. And there's our leaderboard, Michael and Barbara still staying strong at the top of the leaderboard. Next question, which of the following is not on the primary Great Loop route? The Ohio River, the Missouri River, the Tennessee River, or the Mississippi River? Which of those rivers is not on the primary Great Loop route? Very good, Missouri River, that is correct. Those other rivers are places that we're covering, uh, some of them this evening and some of them we covered last week. But yes, you're gonna take the Ohio and the Mississippi and the Tennessee as part of that primary route. And Brad Glazer pulling up towards the top to tie with Michael and Barbara. Next question, how many miles is it to cross the Gulf from Carabelle to Tarpon Springs? Approximately 50, and these are all in statute miles, approximately 100, approximately 170, or approximately 500. And this one's maybe a little bit more challenging because we have not covered this yet. It will be covered on Thursday. Um, and yes, 170 statute miles is the correct answer, 86.7 of you. I said we'd be covering that Thursday. That is actually incorrect. We are covering that next Tuesday. Um, Thursday's different and we'll talk about that before we wrap up tonight. Michael and Barbara are regaining that top spot with their quick answer there. Congratulations on that. Next question, why is the loop typically done counterclockwise? To take advantage of the current on the inland rivers, to avoid hurricane season on the east coast, neither of the above or both of the above? The Homeport crew told me this was a little bit of a trick question but uh, most of you got it, a good percentage of you got it. It's really both of the above. Um, the, the rivers certainly are the primary reason to take advantage of those currents. Um, but if you ask any of the lake boaters, they have huge concerns over if they were to go clockwise, they'd be on the East Coast during hurricane season. And that is concerning for folks that don't live on the East Coast. Next question, what state or province is not on the primary Great Loop route? Ontario, Missouri, Kentucky or Louisiana? Which of those is not a state or province you'll go through on the primary Great Loop route? Louisiana, very nice. We had some questions um, the other day about visiting New Orleans and it is possible, but it's not part of the primary route. Next question, oh, looking at the leaderboard first. Um, Gary Morrison is, is up there and Robin McVeigh Robin and Charlie, nice job. <laughs> As platinum loopers, you should know most of these. Next question, and this came from Tuesday night's Best of the Loop. Where is mile marker zero on the Atlantic ICW? Is it in New York City? Is it in Key West, Norfolk, Virginia, or Baltimore, Maryland? Mile marker zero on the Atlantic ICW. Norfolk, Virginia, very, very nice. Almost two thirds of us. Got the right answer on that one. Checking in with our leaderboard again. We still have a lot of the same people near the top there. Michael and Barbara, Scott Johnson, Gary Morrison, Robin McVeigh, and Brad Glazer all up there at the top right now. Next question, how many looper boats reported completion of the route to AGLCA in 2019? Was it 103, 162, 312, or 475, the number of boats completed in 2019. 162, excellent, most of you knew that. That stumped a, actually stumped a few of the home port crew who don't handle that part of it too much. So well done, 162 is the correct number. And that actually can still change because we sometimes have people not tell us until well after they've crossed their wake. Uh, but right now it's at 162. So Scott Johnson takes the lead. Next question, where is the lowest fixed bridge on the Great Loop that you cannot bypass by taking an alternate route? 
Is it on the Chicago River, the Illinois Waterway, the Erie Canal, or the Champlain Canal? We talked about this a lot on the Best of the Loop as well. It's at mile marker 300.5 on the waterway that it is on. Correct, it is on the Illinois Waterway. Lots of confusion on that with the Chicago River. Um, there are two ways out of Chicago. The Chicago River has about a 17 foot clearance. The CalSAG allows you to go through at up to 19 foot clearance. So there is an alternate route. Lowest fixed point is on the Illinois Waterway. Next question, what does a small yellow triangle or square at the top of a red day mark mean? Does it mean caution? Does it mean you're on the ICW? Does it mean there's treasure ahead? Or does it mean that you should stay to port? And Chris and Elise Caldwell actually mentioned this on today's Lunch and Learn at noon. Very good, 82%, you're on the ICW. That is correct. I'm surprised nobody thought treasure ahead though. We're always looking for treasure. And the leaderboard is staying a little bit consistent, but we had a move up there for Mark Benno and Kent Faraback. Which of the following is not a side trip you can do while on the loop? The St. Johns River, the Colorado River, the Cumberland River, or the Delaware River? Which of those is not a great loop side trip? I think this was kind of an easy one. It of course is the Colorado River. Um, the Cumberland River will take you to Nashville as a side trip. The Delaware River will take you to Philadelphia as a side trip. And the St. John's River is just a very scenic, natural, uh, wonderful, full of wildlife kind of side trip. Next question. When is the Illinois Waterway scheduled to reopen this year? And some of you are there waiting on it, so I think you'll know. But the options are October 29th, November 30th, December 1st, or December 31st. It closed back on July 1st. When is it scheduled to reopen? And of course, the answer is October 29th. I think that's the one we've had the most correct on today. Almost all of you, uh, October 29th is when the Illinois Waterway will reopen. And there's the 20 on the leaderboard. We've had some shifts here and there. Next question, when is the next major Illinois Waterway closure happening? We talked about that during the best of the loop. Is it 2021, 2022? 2023 or 2024. There is another one coming up. It's supposed to be a three to four month closure like it was this year and we're anticipating it being about the same time frame. What year is that? It is 2023. So if any of you are considering looping in 2023, please know that there is another closure. We're anticipating uh, summertime, July, August, September, October time frame. But of course, as more details become available for that, we'll certainly be sharing those with everyone. Next question, what is the Erie Canal's typical operating season? Is it open from mid-May through early October, from June to August, from early April through Thanksgiving, or is it open year round? This is something that uh, some loopers not in the area sometimes don't consider when they're planning for their trip. That is correct, mid-May through early October. So you certainly don't want to be heading up the East Coast early in the spring and arriving at Waterford, New York too far in advance of May because the canals in New York will not yet be open. There is another look at the top 20 on our leaderboard. Next question, what has been the site of the AGLCA fall rendezvous for 20 years until this year? <laughs> and this Zoom is now the site of our fall rendezvous for 2020. But what has been the site for the previous 20 years? Is it Fort Myers, Mobile, Rogersville, Alabama, or Chicago, Illinois? And of course it is Joe Wheeler State Park in Rogersville, Alabama. And we all miss very much being there. It's just such a beautiful place to be here in the fall with the change of seasons and the colors on the trees. And we certainly miss being there with all of you. And there's another look at our leaderboard. The top five are kind of solidifying their positions there, but there's still some that are close. What city has hosted more AGLCA spring rendezvous than any other? Is it Beaufort, South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, New Bern, North Carolina, or Norfolk, Virginia? And I will tell you, all four of those cities have been the host of spring rendezvous in the past, but which has hosted more than any other? Norfolk, Virginia is correct. I think we've had it there for the past 
seven years with one exception when they were renovating the hotel and we went to New Bern. Um, the times in Charleston and Beaufort are pretty far in the past at this point. So our next question, when did the Tenton waterway open, making it possible to do the loop without the challenges of the lower Mississippi? Was it in the 1930s, the 1950s, the 1980s, or the 2000s? So prior to whatever date is the correct answer, anyone who did the loop did go down the lower Mississippi to New Orleans, but um, of course that makes a much more challenging trip for some. It of course was in the 1980s. Um, the lower Mississippi has much more commercial traffic and much fewer services for recreational boaters. So that is the reason the 10 Tom is popular among loopers. We have a tie now for first place. Well done, Scott and Michael and Barbara. Our next question, AGLCA has members from every U.S. state and every Canadian province except for the Yukon Territory. Is that true or false? A lot of people think members are mostly coming from states bordering the loop. So is this true or false? It is true. We have members from every state and every Canadian province except the Yukon. And another check of our leaderboard. Our top few are not really pulling away. Um, we've still got the same leaders, but they're still within range of uh, a lot of people. And it looks like uh, Brett and Sarah Bolin have moved up significantly. Next question, AGLCA, AGLCA has members from which of the following countries? Germany, France, New Zealand, or all of the above? Which countries have AGLCA members representing them? All of the above is correct. In fact, we have members at last count, in addition to the US and Canada, we had members from about 15 different countries, uh, which is pretty amazing. And Brent and Sarah Bolin continue their move towards the top of the list, but those five tops seem to be consistent. Next question, if your air draft is 19 feet, which route will you take into the Great Lakes? Will you take the Erie Canal to Lake Erie? Will you take the Erie Canal to the Oswego Canal to Lake Ontario? The Champlain Canal to the St. Lawrence Seaway? Or with that air draft, can you take any of those routes? It is the Erie Canal to the Oswego to Lake Ontario. That's correct. The Erie Canal all the way to Lake Erie has a 15 foot clearance and the Champlain Canal to the St. Lawrence Seaway has a 17 foot clearance. So at 19 feet, your only option is the Erie Canal to the Oswego to Lake Ontario. Next question, more people climb Mount Everest than complete the Great Loop each year. True or false, more people climb Mount Everest every year than complete the Great Loop. Couple more seconds. And that is true. That's a statistic that a member uh, pointed out to me and a lot of people have really latched onto that. It is uh, more common to reach the summit of Everest than it is to complete the Great Loop. So that's, that's also pretty amazing that it is still such a unique adventure. All right, next question. Approximately how many statute miles is the Great Loop route without including any side trips? Is it about 4,000, about 6,000, about 8,000, or about 10,000? 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, or 10,000? The correct answer is 6,000. Very well done. Almost all of you got that one correct. Let's check out the leaderboard because we've had some moving up. Uh, Brent and Sarah Bolin are now in the top five, knocking Mark Benno out of the top five. I don't think Mark's going to stand for that for very long, though. Um, next question. A harbor host is someone who works for a marina that helps you tie up your boat. True or false? A harbor host is someone who works for a marina that helps you tie up your boat when you arrive. And that, of course, is false. Although uh, there are many helpful people at marinas who tie up your boat, and there are a few harbor hosts that live at marinas. Um, typically, a harbor host is a, an AGLCA member who volunteers to assist other members as they're coming into town with local knowledge, rides for provisioning, things like that. 
Next question, I should wait to fly my white virgie until I've actually begun my loop. Is that true or false? You should wait to fly your white virgie until you have officially started your loop. And that of course is false. The white virgie signifies membership. It signifies that you're a looper. You don't have to actually be currently looping to fly the white virgie. And of course the gold is reserved for those who have completed the entire route. So we have a three-way tie right now for second place. Scott Johnson, Brenton, Sarah Bolin, Rob Dare, duking it out for second place right now. Next question, where is Looper Palooza typically held? Is it in Chicago, New York, Miami, or Fort Myers? And uh, if we are able, the next face-to-face -face AGLCA event will actually be Looper Palooza. Uh, and that would be in January. So there's a little bit of a hint. Is it, uh, there we go, Fort Myers, and most of you got that. I think if I had said that it was gonna be in January sooner, most of you would have ruled out Chicago, uh, which was the second place answer. But yes, we've done that in Fort Myers for the last several years. And that broke that three-way tie for second with Rob Dare. Um, earning 75 on that, I think he must have answered that one pretty quickly. Next question, what popular side trip allows you to visit Nashville? Would that be the Tennessee River that'll take you to Nashville, the Potomac River, the Cumberland River, or the Ohio River? Which of those river side trips will take you to the Music City? And that is the Cumberland River. We've talked about that a few times. Tennessee River is really, really close. Um, Tennessee River will take you to Chattanooga and beyond. You can even go all the way to Knoxville. The Potomac, of course, takes you into DC. And the Ohio is a very long side trip. You can go all the way to Pittsburgh if you want to, if you've got the time. Um, and we have loopers who have done so. Next question. How many locks are on the Trent Severin Waterway? Is it 10, 22, 33, or 44? How many locks are on the Trent Severin waterway? And we mentioned this, I believe, during the best of the loop as well. The answer is 44. Uh, the last lock is actually numbered number 45. Uh, one of the locks, if I'm not mistaken, it's 29, no longer exists. So there are 44 locks numbered one through 45 with one missing. So I was gonna put 44 and 45 as answers there to cause you some confusion, but I decided to go a little easier on you and we are up to the next question. What is the record for the most times a member has done the Great Loop? Is it seven, 12, 21, or 30? What's the record for the most times a member has done the Great Loop? The answer is 30. Uh, and we know that's a lot of times. It's by one of our members who goes around basically once a year. They have a winter home in uh, Florida and a summer home in Michigan, halfway between, and they basically complete the loop each year going back and forth on their boat. So the record is 30 times. You may have seen the orange um, Krogan manatee cruising around, that is them. Next question, if you stop for fuel at Bobby's Fish Camp, where are you? Are you on the Mississippi River, the Tentom, the Atlantic ICW or the Erie Canal? Where is Bobby's Fish Camp, an important fuel stop on the Great Loop? And that is of course on the Tentom. It's on uh, what Robin and Charlie are gonna be covering for a little later on this evening when we get to part two of their route segment. And there's our leaderboard. Not too many questions left. So those of you who are hoping to move up towards the top are gonna to have to make your move pretty soon. Next question. The loop has been completed on the following vessels. It's been done on a jet ski, a kayak, a dinghy, or all of the above. And the answer is all of the above. Not real common to do it on any of those, but it has been done on all of them. Um, so those are some of our more unusual and adventure seeking members. And Mark, Michael and Barbara are still in the lead by about 50 points at this point. 100 points separating first from third. Next question, Mackinac Island is in which lake? Michigan, Superior, Champlain or Huron? Which lake has Mackinac Island on it?
The answer is Huron. That, that got a lot of you. Um, that actually got a few of us on the home port crew too when we were practicing with this. It is Lake Huron because it's so far up north um, on the lake. It's actually part of Huron. And our leaderboard did not change a whole lot, but we've got a tie now for second place. Next question. It is common to lease a boat for the Great Loop. True or false? It's common to lease a boat to do the Great Loop. I think this is going to be a fairly easy one for most of you. The answer is false. It is actually very challenging to lease a boat to do the Great Loop. Insurance is usually the issue. I know of only one successful um, lease of a boat to do the Great Loop. And Sarah and Brent Bolin answered that one quickly and moved into second place by themselves. Next question, which city was rated the best on the loop by AGLCA members? In the most recent update, which we presented on Tuesday, was it Charleston, Chicago, New York, or Ottawa? Which was rated the best city on the loop by AGLCA members? And it was Charleston. Chicago is actually rated number one the last time we tabulated that survey. And Ottawa was number two this time. I think Chicago was number three and Ottawa was number two. Next question. This is something we've been asked a lot lately. If the Canadian border remains closed to US citizens, can you still do the loop? No. Yes, you can choose a boat that can clear 15 foot bridges and take the full length of the Erie Canal to Lake Erie. Yes, you can hire a captain to bring your boat through the Welland Canal from Lake Ontario to Lake Erie and continue your loop or both B and C. Answer is both B and C, at least as of today. We had lots of members um, who couldn't clear the bridges on the Western Erie at that 15 feet and found themselves in the situation of having to hire a captain to take their boat through the Welland so that it was a commercial transport, not a recreational, um, and then we're able to continue their loop. So unless something changes, that could be the situation next year. We're hopeful that's not. Next question, a boat that is 60 feet length overall cannot do the Great Loop. And this is our final question, so true or false? A boat that is 60 feet in length overall cannot do the Great Loop, true or false? Correct, that is false. Most of you got that correct. And as I said, that was our final question. So this is our final leaderboard. And the winner of the three-year AGLCA membership extension, Michael and Barbara Lussier, who basically remained up there at the top for a good portion of it. Uh, and then we have a three-way tie for second place. Mark Benno, Kent Faraback, and Rob Dare. So since it's a three-way tie for second place, we will give all three of them a uh, two-year membership extension. So we'll give away four membership extensions instead of three since we have that three-way tie. Um, many, many thanks to Michael Martin of Curtis Stokes and Associates for sponsoring this game so we can have a little bit of break from the seminar content this evening and just have a little bit of fun. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I know I enjoyed it. I can hear some of the home port crew out there kind of playing along. So um, hopefully you all had some fun with this at home.